Hey everybody, it's Chucka Conroy. Welcome back to more z Duh, fuck, said Xenoblade. <laughs> hey everybody, it's Chucka Conroy. Welcome back to more Splatoon 2. Last time, we began our adventure and got to know the Splattershot Jr. Now, we continue on through Octo Canyon. I'd like to show this thing over here. Marie has a little caged pet with her, and I don't know what this is. It's like... An Among Us crossed with a tooth that can fly. I... It looks like it'd be a minion in Final Fantasy XIV or something. I really don't know what this thing is. I haven't seen it talked about much of any place. I wouldn't be able to tell you what the official name of that character or the species is called. I just thought I'd point it out to you right here, so maybe you can... I don't know, write a creepy pasta about it or something. We're gonna go up here. And then over this way, I'm gonna pop this. Wow, that stays there a long time. There is a Sardinium hidden in the overworld. Easily missable thing there. And now I wanna go through the grates. Into stage two. Welcome to Octopia, the summer wind rises. I don't feel like a lot of people have seen this, but The Wind Rises is like an excellent Ghibli movie. God, I love it so much. That over there, uh, if you could even catch a glimpse of it at all, is an octopod. Distinguishable by their cute little floppy sneakers they try to run at you with. Uh, I am not gonna shoot you, I'm gonna shoot your balloon, take down this octo trooper. Take my rewards there. These are sponge blocks. They can be shot to be filled with ink in order to make you platform a little bit higher. Give you better reach, they also serve as cover. However, enemy ink shrinks them. Be aware of that. Oh, you uh, shot me. I don't know if that's the first time I've been shot by an enemy. It might be. I'll grab that. And I'm just gonna keep on, I was gonna say I'm gonna keep doing fluid motions. Man, uh, I can't believe I killed them so hard that not even their shoes get left behind. Uh, give me that. I'll take that, and then anything over here? I feel like this is the place where they would hide something. No? Okay. If they all had secrets, then none of them would. I understand, I get it. I'm no game designer, but I uh, read a book on it once. I guess that is better than a lot of people who try to criticize games on YouTube. Uh, give me, uh, give me that. Oh, hey, 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 whoa. Uh, give me the armor, look at me. After getting a suitcase, I got my skateboard helmet on and everything. Die! Thank you. So the weapon that I am wielding here in Octo Canyon, uh, I want you to look at it closely. This is called the Hero Shot. It's a very all around, good at everything kind of weapon with average stats in pretty much every single way. Uh, comparing it to other Splatoon weapons, it has average mobility, average uh, shot frequency, average turfing. It kind of just does it all, and I want you to keep that in mind because a lot of other weapons are going to be compared to it going forward as it is so average. You know? uh, pop your balloon. Uh, you got to know the despair of knowing that your balloon was popped. That balloon contains nothing in it, it's just simply a decoy. I don't believe that does anything for you. It's not like there's any points for you to earn or anything like that. I could be wrong. Uh, this right here is a squeegee. They suck up ink, but they're pretty harmless. Marie, you don't know what you're talking about. They are the worst. Oh my god, the things they do with squeegees. I, I don't like them. All the time. This is a reference to, I think, the second level from Splatoon 1, uh, where there's some reused terrain here where you go around that tower on the grades and deal with the squeegee at the beginning. I guess they thought the level design was good enough to explain what that did, so they thought they would just reuse it, because, well, they own it. Uh, that is uninkable. Pop that, get all sorts of... Well, I can get one egg. That wasn't nearly as cool looking... It wasn't nearly as cool as it looked. Just gonna swim up here, get some secret boxes. Containing no string, but a sardinium. I need to call it that, it's not sardinium, it's a reference to sardines, so it'd be sardinium. Pop you, pop you, oh cool, I can get double armor here. And I can also get a splash down, a special that I have not seen before here. Uh, gonna wait for you guys, come on down, come on down. You're the next contestant on the Price is Right! <laughs> I took them all out, uh, they, oh no, here's some more. Uh, okay, we're gonna get up high. And then, splash down! Cool. Oh, one eight. Aw, oh, you're a dirty boy. Here, let me just put you out of your misery so you never have to take a shower ever again and get all that gobbledygook off of you. Take that. I have not been using bombs nearly enough. They are quite good. They consume a lot of ink, but if the ink's not going into anything else, they're pretty lethal. Blow up the sponge blocks. 
Copy that. Strong work, Agent. The zapfish appears to be close. Forward. Don't gotta tell me twice. Look at that. Triple armor? Triple armor. Triple armor madness. That up there is an Octobomber. They're awfully slow and don't have good mobility, but they hurl up splat bombs on you and can be lethal as a result. Uh, I would lose my armor in one hit if that directly hit me. Thankfully, I did not have that problem. Climb, 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 climb. I can climb faster by jumping repeatedly. And then if we go around this painted area, no way, right? Yeah, some bonus eggs. I'll pop that with my bomb. Because I had armor on, I got 10 bonus eggs. It unfortunately doesn't keep stacking as you keep putting on more armor. I had a nice uh, visor in front of my eyes right there. Music heads are still buzzing over that legendary underground show two years ago. Anyone lucky enough to catch DJ Octavio's opening set and the Squid Sisters headlining had their minds blown and their lives changed that night. Aw, oh, you can see Marina, a younger Marina there in the background. Oh, hero suit damage, submerge yourself in ink to recover quickly. Do you say anything else? Are you, are you just gonna go through the song and dance again where I try to flirt with you and you just like shut me down because I've never heard- I still can't believe you've heard of the- yeah, okay, she's saying the exact same things. Boss mind if I abandon my post for just a minute to go freshen up. Apparently this area is called Tentacle Outpost. Agent 4, the first time you encounter an enemy, try to figure out its moves. The entrances to the Octarian lairs are invisible. You'll need to use your ink to reveal them. Zapfish are the source of all of Inkopolis' energy, you know? I just- I can't forgive the Octarians for what they've done. I need a vacation. Dude, shut your face. okay, fine! Yes, mommy. I will never call her mommy again, that's creepy. Uh, before I make anything worse uh, between her and me, let's just go out and uh, back to Inkopolis Plaza where we will uh, learn about a new gameplay mechanic. Our new topic for the day is... <laughs> okay, that's pretty funny. Uh, our new topic for the day is the Galleria. We have heard so much about this place and now we're ready to go. Hello, hello, let me guess. You're looking for some new weapons. You've come to the right place. Our weapons come in sets. A main weapon on ZR, a sub weapon on R, oh, and S, a special weapon. Sounds complicated? Don't fret. You can always press Y to try out my products before buying. While you try while you try them, you can swap weapons with plus and press minus with a weapon highlighted to get more details on subs and specials. And if you want an in-depth in -depth info about a weapon, just press ZL while you're in my shop and I'll explain it. I've got the finest selection of weaponry in all of Inkopolis. Take a look. You're ready to wield the splatter shot. The splatter shot is beloved for its ease of handling and high potential. This is the latest model of the go-to weapon. The included burst bombs are great for both attack and defense and the splashdown special doubles on attack power. You can also use the splashdown as a, defense a, a defensive ace up your sleeve. So it's perfect for learning the basics of battling. I don't quite agree with you there, Sheldon, but we'll get to that in a moment. If you learn to make great use of this set, you'll be a force to be reckoned with. This all around set is great for mastering the basics of battle. So this um, minion who is passing himself off as, a, off as a horseshoe crab is Sheldon. He's where you're gonna be buying weapons from and uh, at different levels, you'll unlock various different weapons. Some of them are variants on other ones. Other ones are unique. We'll get to them all eventually. If we were to uh, press L, Whoa, friend, I could feel your aura before you even set foot in my shop. Your eagerness is palpable. This is Flo. I'd like you to listen to her talk here for a sec. She's a cross between Sea Slug and Okami character. Once you make it to level four, I think you'll be ready, but I don't want to rush it. So it should happen organically or not at all. Now go, realize your potential, friend. I have no doubt you'll find yourself after a couple dozen regular battles. I regret everything. <laughs> I didn't know he said that. I've never been in there too low level before. Uh, what if we go shoe shopping? Hey, welcome to Shell Fresh. Yo, are you new here or something, dude? No offense, but you're looking real dry, like bone dry. 
You seem nice enough, but I got the reputation to keep. I'll sell you some shoes as soon as you prove that you can keep it raw. Okay, so don't have flaky skin, have a rash instead. Got it. The last one we can't navigate to organically, so we'll just have to walk in the front door like some peasant. Welcome to ye old cloth fee! Thou hast all the freshness of a salt- of a piece of salted cod! Lo, a salted cod piece! Ew. Could I but help thee, I would. Alas, I must turn thee hence. Thou hast not the level required of my wares. Shouldst thou reach level four, mine arm shall be open. Get thee to a regular battle, and return hither once thy level hath been raised. Okay, so I gotta be cool, and Joe ain't too cool for school. Well, shopkeepers, have I got news for you. On this profile, I absolutely got a rash in my codpiece. Let's go shopping. From the top, Headspace also sells bath bombs and moisturizers if you look in the background, not just headgear. There's Flo, who is the main shopkeeper, but also Kramond. He's an emperor shrimp who has a symbiotic relationship with sea slugs in nature. Put on your inking cap, darling. You already own that one. Ah, uh, making plans. You have eyeballs? <laughs> I guess he would never see her eyeballs from that point of view, so that's good. Um, headgear are the only pieces of equipment that have the abilities comeback, last ditch effort, opening gambit, and tenacity. Ye old cloth shop! Alas, that item is sold out. Thou doth possess that gear with a different main gear ability. Wouldst thou care to trade it in? Nay, I would nither. I, I, I think that's how you say it. Uh, this is uh, Jelfonzo. He is a reference to Jalonzo from Splatoon 1, whose whole gimmick was that he couldn't speak English very well. This guy also can't speak well, but it's because he doesn't understand the time period that we are in. According to official interviews, Jalfonzo was asexually produced from Jalonzo's body. Shirts are the only place that you'll find Haunt, Ninja Squid, Respawn Punisher, and Thermal Ink. Jalonzo was a personal favorite Splatoon character of mine, so I'm kind of happy to see a spiritual successor to him of any of the shopkeepers that were in the first one. And last up, Shellafresh, the only place you'll find Drop Roller, Object Shredder, and Stealth Jump. I'd argue that shoes are the most consistently good abilities and footwear is the most important choice to make. The shopkeeper Bisque is a spider crab who is from the frigid north. You already have that pair, dude. And now for a bonus, the shopkeepers won't allow you to buy anything from them if you are not connected to the internet. So I think, I'm just gonna, you know, disconnect from the internet here for a second. Welcome to, dude, did you know you're offline right now? Come back when you get your internet connection on. Translation, I don't sell the no hillbillies who don't have a computer. Thou art most welcome hither, but dost that thou dost appear to be off the line. Return upon thy successful connection to the net of inter. Ah, hello friend, I'd love to help you, but I'm not feeling a connection. Come back once you're connected to the internet and we'll start fresh. Smell your modem! Hello, help! Sheldon! You seem to be off the air right, offline right now. Come back when you're connected to the internet. Good enough character moments that I don't think a lot of people have actually seen. Oh, hi, Mark. All that done and said, oh, I got 1994 cash. Good year. There was one weapon that little Joe here wanted to buy. Let's buy the weapon of the day so we can begin to learn. Today is the most basic average automatic gun with balanced stats, the one to get you used to all the game's mechanics, the splatter shot. It's easy to learn and just good enough at everything that it can still work at high levels of play. Beyond the average range, average damage, and average fire rate, this is our first example of a middleweight weapon. In line with everything else, middleweight is the most common weight class of all weapons, so yeah, it has average mobility too. It might sound like it has no identity of its own, but if anything sets it apart, it's its great ink economy of the shots combined with its decent spread. In addition, it's a great fighter having a short time to splat. The bare minimum time it takes is exactly one fourth of a second, making it one of the fastest killers out there. If there's any outright weakness to this weapon, it has nothing to do with the gun itself. 
it's the Splat Dooleys. They're very similar in terms of stats, but the Splattershot lacks the additional tool of being able to dodge, a unique trait to the Dooley weapon class. So oftentimes, it takes more work for a Splattershot to win once Dooleys have challenged them. It's a standout, frustrating matchup to look out for. Basic mechanics are out in the open, let's talk strategy! Specifically, I want to talk about a technique known as substrafing. Don't be intimidated by the name, this is not one of those 10 frame perfect input in a row fighting game techniques that who has the time to learn it, no. Just hold down R to get your sub weapon ready, turn into a squid, and while still holding R, pop out of squid form to change direction. Simple as that. This allows turning on a dime, being instantly at full speed, losing the least amount of momentum possible. It is the best way to strafe and the fastest way to move all around to dodge attacks. This is possible on every single weapon, but is most helpful on shooters meant for combat. Between this technique and the core stats being good at everything, the Splatter Shot is what you make it. It's an easy to learn weapon and excellent to pick up for anyone wanting to learn the shooter class. It's able to play defensively and outmaneuver the heavy stuff. It's capable of sneak attacks and getting out of trouble. It's capable of zipping around all over the place and getting in people's faces. And speaking of doing that, its sub weapon is a first bomb, the burst bomb. This is a less lethal bomb that detonates on contact with any floor, wall, or unfortunate sap, costing only 40% of the ink tank to use. On its own, the burst bomb can be thrown twice without a reload and gets a kill in two hits if your aim is true. It's not without its combat uses either, even if it doesn't immediately kill. It's quick pressure at range dealing with snipers or just checking if there is one there. The damage is just enough to destroy objects instantly, get other players out of ink armor, or finish someone off if they just barely didn't die in a scrap with a teammate. If your friend's involved in a fight and you can't get over there to help them directly, toss a burst bomb their way. It might be the difference. But my favorite application personally is that it gives far more movement options to whoever's carrying it. No more having to shoot walls. It paints almost any wall in an instant and you don't even need to slow down to climb up it. It also functions as a nice touch-up tool. If that ink isn't going to anything, might as well cover up the bits of enemy ink to keep moving and get some free points. As for what this does for the splatter shot, it's excellent as an immediate way to ink up an enemy's escape route just before getting the jump on them. Because we like exact numbers, a direct hit is always 60 damage while an indirect hit is 25 to 35 depending on proximity. Given that the splatter shot hits for 35 per bullet, it's always at least two shots to kill after using the bomb. Bombing then shooting is slower than shooting alone, but it's insurance making sure they don't get away or just making it easier to land the kill. Of course, in some situations, it seems more advantageous to just shoot, and that's fine. Versatility is what makes the burst bomb so potent. If someone's getting away and it seems like you're gonna have to give chase into their ink to go after them, don't play their game. Toss a burst bomb at them from out of range and there you go. It's not often talked about, but the burst bomb is surprisingly a very rare sub weapon. They're very sparing with giving this to strong weapons, so that might be a reason to play this kit all on its own. For the last point about it, the effect of sub power up on burst bombs is the same as any other bomb. Increased throwing range and increased throwing speed. Not recommended. Time for the special and it's a first timer. Redundancy on both of the explanations, it's the SPLASHDOWN! This is a weird one, and not just because it evokes the question of, hey, this isn't a weapon, so why don't they just punch the ground all the time? This attack has a windup of leaping into the air, staying there for a moment, and splashing down. The Swirling Vortex of Death does 180 damage to anything it hits, while the splash damage is anywhere from 55 to 70. The one hit kill range is outright shown to all players with a marker as soon as the animation starts. A splashdown will always defuse bombs in its area and gets massive bonus damage against bubble blowers, booyah bombs, ballers, and even just the splash damage alone is enough to defuse ink armor. Splashdowns also hit surprisingly high up, making them a decent counter to ink jet as well. This is very much the anti-special special. It is not an emergency panic button to dodge attacks and counter with a one-hit kill, contrary to what earlier balance patches would have you believe. Other players can see when you have your special, and with practice, its predictable movement can be reacted to and shot at especially if clicking the stick is a first reaction to already being shot. It won't take many bullets to take down the little health you have left. Thankfully, if it's shot down mid-attack, it only loses 25% of the special gauge instead of the usual 50. So, glad they thought of that. 
The best uses for splashdowns are when it's not easily seen and reacted to, or from up on high ledges where it's much more difficult to shoot at and the height is rewarded with a larger damage area below, though no additional turf is aimed. Just so you know, jumping is always a part of the animation even if you are already jumping. That is, unless it's a super jump. Yep, splashdowns can be activated mid super jump and attack upon landing. This is useful in punishing players capping the super jump marker, or just in remembering that super jumping is allowed at any time during a fight and could be a big help to push forward. Following the rule of greater height being rewarded, the most bang for your buck is activating it at the apex of a super jump because it's the only situation where the jump part of it can be skipped. The one hit kill area is still announced to all players when super jumping, but with this good timing, it means the damage comes out in two thirds the amount of time mitigating this downside. In Splat Zones, this is often a free stopper on the enemy timer, if not an instant kill on whoever was locked in a firefight with the person you were jumping to. On to mode specific properties, all clams are dropped upon splashing down. If you don't know what this means, don't worry. As a last usage, splashdown should be used at the end of a turf war for some free points as the last seconds are so crucial. Special Power Up has a weird effect on splashdowns, increasing the size of the maximum splash damage area, but does not make the one hit kill area any larger or turf the ground any better. Had a lot to say about this special, but everything we've been over already applies to the splatter shot. Furthering the versatility of the burst bomb, it's great getting enemies stuck in the ink from the splashdown and then following up with a burst bomb thanks to that splash damage. You get a free reload and even regain control before the splashdown animation is over. It just gets so many kills. The requirement for this splashdown is 170 points. Low cost, mixed with easy turfing. For gear on the splatter shot, there's some first timer abilities to go over, such as comeback. For 20 seconds after every respawn, the user is granted four subs of ink saver main, ink saver sub, ink recovery up, run speed up, swim speed up, and special charge up. Any frontline fighter who's fighting and dying a lot in ranked battles benefits from this a lot, and it pairs well with another mutually exclusive ability. Found only on shoes, stealth jump. It hides the super jump marker from other players if they're standing even just a short distance away. And this pairs with yet another ability, quick super jump. Does exactly what it says, shortens the startup time for super jumps. It's one of the most economical abilities in the game. The base windup is 1.35 seconds of vulnerability and just one sub slot of quick super jump lowers that to 0.97 seconds. No need to stack, just one sub slot will do it. The effective main power up on splatter shots is less shot deviation while jumping. Might help a little, but not worth stacking a ton. Other than that, due to how remarkably average the splatter shot is, pretty much every ability will offer it some meaningful buff. You can't go wrong by running a little bit of a lot of different abilities. As an extension of that logic, your map rotations are very open-ended for this one. It's a nice safe pick pretty much no matter what the rotation says. And now for something a little different. All weapons have multiple kits available, offering different play styles, and the first of these is the Tenatec Splattershot. On all alternate kits, the main weapon is exactly the same in every way. The difference comes in the physical appearance, so it can be picked out during normal gameplay, the sub-weapon, the special weapon, and the amount of ink required to charge up that special weapon. The Splat Bomb is back once again as the sub-weapon. Told you it was common. With a more well-rounded gun, it's easy to use splat bombs to manipulate enemies into doing what you want or to trap them. Now that we have a combat-oriented gun with splat bombs, I'd like to tell you about an easy-to-grasp tactic known as pre-firing. Whenever you know an enemy is hiding behind an object or inside a corridor, use the bomb to force them to move and gain the advantage. A bomb is an immediate threat that will kill them if it explodes too close by. So throw the bomb in a way that blocks their retreat, fire where they have to move, and make them swim into you. By firing in the natural direction they have to go to avoid taking the bomb, it creates a pincer effect that gives you the advantage. All weapons with bombs are capable of pulling this off, but I feel this is the first time where it's a very viable strategy. Just watch out for your ink consumption. Moving on to the special weapon, not all is familiar here. We have the special weapon known as Ink Jets. A jetpack armed with a cannon, because one of those things on its own wasn't kick-ass enough. Upon activation, a marker is placed on the user's current position. Remember that bit for later. Getting airborne takes a moment and is a very vulnerable time, so we're three for three on specials not making good panic buttons. 
Once in the air, it gets a maximum of seven exploding shots with a range of a splatter scope. Since most would argue the splatter scope is the longest range viable weapon, that's some damn good range. Direct shots are certain death, while indirect shots are good for finishing already damaged foes hitting for 30 to 50 damage. Though the shots travel slowly and the crosshair is often dated by the time the shot arrives. Leading fire is important, but the shots are also good at cutting off enemy escape routes and hitting them with a little splash damage to make them easier to take out than shooting directly at them. I hope you remember the first bit, because after 7.5 seconds of base time, or after falling into a death plane, the inkjet will eject its holder back to the original marker. The inkjet also comes with some more obscure properties. It's held in the air by two streams of ink. These do 0.5 damage per frame of running over an enemy, which is... something, I guess. More importantly, I bring this up because these jets need to push off a solid object to stay elevated. If it's over a grate, the whole thing plummets. The special is pretty intricate, so how are we gonna use it exactly? First, hiding the activation in places not seen by common camera angles is a good start. Another option is activating it high up to get a good view of the action and make it so enemies who want to challenge you make themselves very obvious when climbing up. It can reach high points on maps that no other weapon can, making for unique sniper purges the user can duck behind or just sitting too high for anybody to hit. Get a good view of the action and shoot. Because it has a hard time hitting its mark by itself, shooting where allies are fighting is where you're going to be most helpful and likely to finish off damaged targets. While the flight might offer some unique shot opportunities, the downside is that it turns you into a slow, attention-grabby target. If the heat's on, remember the inkjet has more movement options than merely moving side to side. The inkjet can jump to dodge or jump repeatedly to slow a descent while falling. A lot of players spam this because they think it makes them harder to hit, but it doesn't give a lot of benefit and can be very predictable. It's better used for quick corrections and dodges. Don't be in mid-jump when a charger can shoot you, have it ready when they open fire. Another way to mix it up is turning into a squid briefly to shrink and be harder to hit. On that note, you are allowed to go back down into the ink and swim around with it, but this wastes a lot of the special duration and I wouldn't recommend doing it if it can be avoided. A really weird property is that the eject marker is placed in the player's last ground position. This can be used to not die, but it uses up the entire special gauge, whereas just dying would only lose half. You can use it if you want to, but you probably don't. All in all, I would say the inkjet is a weird special that takes considerably more skill to play than others. You're not gonna waste an ink armor as long as you know the right time to activate it. Meanwhile, you could activate an inkjet at the right time, and the shots are just wasted if you suck. The inkjet is a more situational special that might not be everyone's cup of tea, but it has its merits because it's a hard counter to the Stingray, a very prominent special in ranked battles. Stingrays have bad mobility and often fire level with the ground hoping to find targets there. The inkjet elevating itself is a good defense against this, and with a long range, it can usually one-shot a stingray because they can't correct their aim very quickly. As for what this does for the ten attack, the only synergy an inkjet gets to have with the rest of its kit is how close it likes to be to the action normally, and how well the main and sub can defend themselves after landing when it's over. The Tenetech, being decent at fighting and having a good bomb means it isn't totally doomed in these situations. Remember that specials are free reloads and none of those cannon shots used up any real ink, so almost always throw a bomb after landing. A trend not easily observed is that every inkjet weapon has either a bomb or toxic mist for its sub, so the playstyle of the Tenetech is pretty constant for all inkjets. Since this is a first timer, the effect of special power up on inkjets is an increase to the duration and the splash damage radius. Don't play this for the duration. It takes one main and two subs just to potentially get an eighth shot out of it. Play this purely for the blast radius if that's wanted. Moving on to the other abilities, no matter how good your inkjet game is, sometimes the enemy's just gonna get at the marker and be ready to ambush. This gives special attention to Drop Roller! This is an ability that is technically helpful to every weapon, allowing them to hold a direction on the control stick and dodge that way upon landing from a super jump. The Tenetech gets double duty out of this, be it from the frequent normal super jumping or from the inkjet's eject button. Not only that, but this is more than just a dodge. For three seconds after dodging, the player has effects of run speed up, swim speed up, and ink resist up. These buffs combine with a dodge and the Tenetech's good fighting ability, and it means that it can counter ambushes and live to tell the tale. 
In case you think this is a replacement for the dodge roll on the dualies, it's actually much slower than the dodge on those weapons. Can't emulate the real thing perfectly, I guess. I'd also like to showcase run speed up in the spotlight. Because there's no such ability as fly speed up, the inkjet benefits from this ability, though only on greats. This is one of the most absurd gear perks there is, and I don't think that many people are aware of it. The whole package here is pretty good at every map or mode, not bad at anything in particular. Just sorta of works, doesn't really excel. It's the jack of all trades. Some, but not all weapons, actually have a third kit available. In this case, the monochrome Kenza splatter shot. Its sub-weapon is a first, the suction bomb! These tin cans of compressed death attach to surfaces, have a slightly larger area for one-hit kills, do significantly more damage than splat bombs, and get a slightly larger splash damage area. In return, they take twice as long to detonate as a splat bomb and use a whopping 70% of the ink tank. Due to its long detonation time, use the things that set it apart from the splat bomb first and foremost. Either throw it at objects to instantly detonate and take advantage of the best object damage in the game, or use that suction! Play around with which services it can stick to. Why not try out recon mode on the current map rotation and see everything you can make it stick to? It might surprise you. Some good map terrain to be on the lookout for are corners the enemy has to walk past but might not see a bomb there, the undersides of grades because they can hit anybody standing on top, or just placing it at a gap somebody wants to jump over. In plain sight, it gets some good usage too. Remember pre-firing and treating the bomb and yourself as two halves of the same player. Its long detonation time and large explosion makes it a long-standing threat to anybody who wants to move a certain way. Either use it as a suppression tool to stop a retreat, or use it as a spacing tool to keep them from advancing. Speaking of suppression, it can stop a super jump like a splat bomb does, but because it takes so long to explode, it has a tighter window of time to make it work. The 220 damage it hits for seems superfluous, but this is such a good deal against splash walls, ballers, and the Rainmaker shield, shredding through all of those with ease. One of the biggest reasons to play the subweb. In all, it's a great suppression and manipulation tool, but the high ink consumption is something to be wary of. Thankfully, the splatter shot has nice ink economy, but still make every shot count. Since it's our first time, the effective sub power up on suction bombs is faster travel time and a longer throwing range. That's it. Helpful on some longer range weapons, not so much on the short Kenza. It's a pretty nice sub weapon for a splatter shot, allowing for even more tactical play than you would see on the normal version or the 10 attack. But its special weapon is the Tenta Missiles. A special weapon you all said was bad for a long time, but I always knew it was good. Upon activation, you are locked into only holding the missile racks in kid form for 10 seconds or until firing. Swimming is still allowed to reposition, however. When holding the racks, you are a sitting duck. Hey, at least it was honest, it didn't look like it was a good shield. The missiles hit for 150 damage on direct hit, 30 on indirect. It can target five opponents at a time. That's four players and the Rainmaker shield in Rainmaker mode. The number of missiles, however, is determined by the number of locked on targets and should be considered before using it. Two targets take five missiles apiece. Three or more targets take four missiles each. Whereas one target on its lonesome takes 10 to missiles. Huh? That's probably what they were going for, honestly. To maximize the benefit of using it and minimize the risk involved, maybe get behind a wall before using it. Maybe even super jump back to spawn if you want to go back that way anyway. The farther away, the more stuff will be in that circle. On the enemy side, once you pull the trigger, they're immediately alerted to the fact that they're being targeted. A ring appears lined with an arrow for each missile yet to land. The landing points are even telegraphed to them by circles on the ground. On top of that, the missiles make a loud whizzing sound as they travel through the air, making it impossible for these to surprise someone as long as they're, you know, paying attention. A target that stays swimming at top speed can't possibly be hit by a missile that was intended for them. If a ten of missiles gonna land a kill, it's due to inability to move or because their escape route has already been painted. Remember that specials give free reloads, and certain sub-weapons, like the suction bomb, prevent foes from swimming a certain way. It's generally best to fire at a cluster of enemies to maximize the chances of them swimming together and tripping over each other's missiles. This all sounds more like a minor inconvenience than a powerful super weapon, so what's so good about it anyway? It creates openings, either by shutting down a backline weapon over unlimited range, 
or by scrambling the enemy to stop one of their pushes. Another valid use is interrupting a Stingray. They're forced to swim around, wasting their special timer. They also should be fired at the end of a turf war because they're quite good at painting and are allowed to explode after the time limit is over just so long as they're deployed. Though my personal favorite use is in tower control where they're a nice cheap tower cleaner. A lot of Tenda missiles are easy to activate and on good turfing weapons unlike the expensive Stingray. Tenda missiles are on a lot more weapons too. But even with these uses, I could see some people going, well this doesn't sound like it actually kills anybody. That's because the most useful tool it provides isn't the missiles themselves, it's the targeting system. It provides all enemy locations over a sustained period updating in real time. So if playing on voice chat, use that information, tell it to teammates. Don't just say, I shot two. Say, the end zap in the zone is going right, the roller is swimming back. This is a special that's made a lot better by observing and watching where enemies are going than just letting it rip right away. It is the easiest way to track multiple enemies. That's all for the properties and uses, so how does this work with the Kenza? The answer, not very well. The Kenza likes being close to the action, and if it needs to pull back for a reason other than using it special, it's because your team is not in control. All it really does is shut down those long range weapons the Kenza doesn't like to tangle with. If there's any positivity left to be mentioned, it's that the Kenza's Tenna Missiles are 180 points, making it one of the easiest ones to build up fast. As for special power-up, on Tenna Missiles, they offer a larger targeting circle and more painting from the missiles themselves. I sorta like this ability, and of course it was going to be good. The ability has the Tenna Missiles on the packaging for crying out loud. Yet again, a well-rounded weapon that wants to run little bits of lots of abilities. For the stages this plays well on, I'm gonna say that narrow pathways and objects to hide behind are definitely the way to go. Both to use the suction bombs in opportune places, and to use the Tenta missiles from behind. What maps are we gonna be playing today? I don't know! It's time to find out! That's what time it is, Pearl! Manta Maria and Piranha Pit. I accidentally stepped on one of the conveyor belts here. It wasn't pretty. They're not all bad, you can use them to your advantage. And that's all the time we've got! Until next time, don't get cooked, stay off the hook! I seem to be gravitating toward this hat a little bit. I am the adorable child going with his father on a fishing trip. <laughs> I thought a lot about which weapon I wanted to play. All of them have their advantages, and this was a difficult choice, but I think I want to go for the Tenetech Splatter Shot. I have the most experience with it, as seen by this wax seal that I got on it. I've inked over 100,000 turf with it. I want to go into what all these things mean another time. But for now, let's get into it. Piranha Pit is our first showdown of the day. Piranha Pit is a strange map having conveyor belts all over the place that, well, you can carry your bombs around. If they're a suction bomb, they'll stick to that as well. These are, uh, these are mirrored on each side, so don't worry about the rotation when time limit is called affecting what you get out of it. Uh, whichever side being face up randomly is what is counted in that. It, it doesn't work like that. I believe that it did for a long time as well, but sadly it does not. Oh, I don't know why I'd say sadly. It's actually kind of good that it doesn't. Back to Piranha Pit, this is a super giant of a map with a lot of large areas outward and not in the center. No, uh, he avoided- Man, I- I can't shoot the broad side of a planet, jeez. Oh, no, 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 no. Get out of here, get out of here, get out of here. Yeah, okay, somehow won. Not sure how that worked. Ah! <laughs> the joke, the freaking joke. I just talked about this trick too, and he freaking used- It was on the map that I was showing it on too. Oh, beat me at my own game. Oh, and they're launching bombs everywhere. Hello, okay, goodbye. Gonna keep going. I think I'll activate my special up here. Get a nice view of the action. Probably grazed off that guy's eyebrows. I'm not seeing any, but I hit somebody. Uh, there's a guy up there that I didn't hit. Okay, uh, roll that off. Nope. Ha, knew you were coming. Knew you were coming. And uh, you knew that I was gonna turn around too. Hmm. All right, uh, weapon that I have a lot of experience with, I promise. 
Getting into some trivia, the original Splattershot, the one with Burst Bomb, it had Tena Missiles as its special in the Splatoon 2 demo, the global test fire that was made available before the game's release. Um, I don't believe that this was actually the plan at one point in time. It would eventually get the Tena Missiles as a special, but the Kenza version added in an update. But uh, I think it was just because the Splat Roller was in the same demo and they wanted to showcase different specials rather than the splashdown on it. Uh, just so as many specials as possible would be in the demo. That's what I think. Uh, gonna not roll that off there, come on. It's not doing so hot in my bomb game today, which is a shame because as you saw before, the bomb game is usually my best thing. You're painting us an opening, which is nice. I'm lose that. I know there's a guy over there. You coming over this way? Yes. Up there. Uh, let's toss that. I knew I should not have approached. Got a trade there. I'm finding it a little uh, difficult to find times to use this inkjet. I think what I'll probably do is build this up and then right at the end of the time limit, maybe activate it to try to paint the ground a little better. Far away. Get some green in there pink. It's a lot better to cover up your enemy's ink color because they're also losing points when you do that. Looks like I'm going to be sitting at the end of this one. Nope, not getting back in. I had to sit in the corner in timeout while my teammates won the game for us. Oh, we did pretty good, actually. We painted the sides, which those can add up to a lot of points. Um, This is a map that I would say painting the center might not actually be the most important thing. Shoot, that's pretty good. Activated my special once. Whoa, we had 12 kills on the dually squelchers there. Ooh, I am officially fresh now. Um, I, uh, put on some ointment and deodorant for my rash. The Mina, the Pinta, the Manta Maria! I misread this map name so many times when it came out. I was calling it the Manta Marina. And I was like, oh, Marina got a map named after her. That's cool. She's very popular. And then I find out, nope. Note the dual layer design of center where we have this grate that can be, uh, bullets can fall down underneath it, turfing the ground below. Nice vantage point for a long range weapon. A eh, place that we could drop down if we had a splash down or use our special. Where is the enemy? The enemy is everywhere and nowhere. Uh, seriously? Uh, what? Uh, I haven't done any of this killing though, but I'm, we're kind of, where, where did they? think they were gonna go with that uh you just all right if you just want to deliver yourself unto me without attacking then go for it that's a great example of what not to do in that situation uh, oh hi uh i'm not gonna make fun of you anymore i promise uh going over there no nope. uh nobody got up my marker though i guess that was good uh what no you don't this is a weird game wow uh Another place to keep in mind is this box over here. I think it's a pretty good sniping perch that gives you a good view of the middle where they can only hide behind the pole if they make themselves they make themselves pretty obvious to approach you. Uh, just be wary of people swimming up this that I'm painting right now. Coming over, going over here. Uh, you're going back, okay. That's actually a pretty good use for the rolls, just getting away. Uh, no, you don't. Uh, let's bomb you. Back, gonna shoot you in the. Well, I had your back if you didn't have your own back. Okay, <laughs> I'm getting good teammates in these games. Wow, they're uh, they're doing quite well. Uh, hi, bud. Gonna shoot you. Nice, protected myself. Got you. Whoa, double kill. Nice, good one. And triple. And quad, quad, quad. Oh, no, I don't want to get greedy. Nope, no, no, no. He already stopped me up with the bomb. Go, go, go. Oh, you're there. Oh, damn it. <laughs> he got away. Uh, flushed you out. Ah, bad time to run out of ink. I was doing so good. Uh, we'd have to suck pretty bad to lose. I'm going to jump in over here. I have quick super jump as one of my abilities you might have saw earlier. I love quick super jump. One of my favorite abilities in the game. It's just so helpful when you least expect it. It makes you more efficient just all around. 
No, 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 don't do this to me. I just said we would have to suck so bad to lose at this point. Come on. I think we actually managed to lose this. Oh my gosh. Get out of here. Like I said, everything gets decided in the last 30 seconds. Your early game actions mean nothing. <laughs> Six kills, two specials. Pretty good uses of those specials, too. We had a guy get zero kills and uses 10 missiles twice, and we lost that game. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Man. One, one win, one loss. I'll happily take it. I like this weapon an awful lot, and I think I got to showcase it quite well for Turf War standards. So really quick, this is me in post. I had not intended this, but some people were asking if I was going to feature artwork at the end of these videos, and I had so much artwork sent to me after the release of the first episode that I decided, yeah, we are going to do that. Maybe as we're winding down at the end of every video? Sure. Though it is kind of funny, the game I wasn't contributing much, we won, and the one that I was contributing a lot, we lost. <laughs> oh well. It's just how it be sometimes. Next time on Splatoon 2, we're going to be talking about a brand new weapon class, something you would not see in any other shooter. See you guys then!